we will sing it again. The way we are, the way we are thinking, it, it's like it's like we are sleeping. We are singing. We are talking to the Lord. You're not talking to yourself. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. You have done for us, oh Lord. I am saying thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It is, as I said, I remember that Brother Jemenyame has a group he always go to on Sunday. So I want to commend him on that too. I pray that God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. Uh, but uh, I want, I, apart from him, I won't say anybody to do that again. Because I want the church to be big. So if you want to do it, please do it on behalf of the church so that we will know that church is spreading. It. He has started with his friend before. You get what I'm saying? So that it will be on the uh, uh, the tree of the the stem of the tree of the church. I think we understand. Uh, we, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. This we have a group. This is a group. Uh, you're teaching the doctrine of the church, everything, and then you let us know, and then we know that oh, you have funded our, our fellowship. You get what I'm saying? You have funded our fellowship. We ready to support. Because, but by the time you said, oh, you start your own, you start your own, I'm doing, that's when we are dividing the church. That's what I mean. But if you say, oh, I start the house fellowship on behalf of the church, that's when we are still doing it for the church. You are, you are spreading the holiness of the doctrine of the church. It's just not like, uh, like we start church now, and I call it one name. But me, it's not the Palai Bible Church. That's when I have gone out separately. But Brother Jamie has started with his friend before. So please, that's what I mean. I encourage us to do it, but let us do it on the umbrella of the church. So God will help us in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. So we shall quickly listen to the choir song, and then we go to the message of today.
wonderful day today father we thank you for a blessed week father we thank you for a blessed lifetime lord in heaven you've loved us even before we were born 
Father, you brought salvation to our doorsteps, not because we are better than any other person, but because of your love. And it's the same love, the Lord in heaven, that allows us to come here this morning to listen to you. Father God in heaven, even as we've listened to the Great Commission message this morning, Father, teach us. Lord in heaven, give us the strength to continue to spread your word. Lord, you've told us that we are passengers in this world, but you've given us one assignment to spread the word. <coughs> Father, Lord, we pray for strength. We know that it is not easy, but with you, everything is possible. Father God, even as we are going to continue with the message this morning, Father, we pray for understanding. Lord in heaven, even as the angels are gathered here, they've enjoyed the sermon this morning. Lord in heaven, do we enjoy the sermon coming this afternoon? The Lord in heaven, it's a message handed from you, not from us, because you love us even more. Lord, we bless you. We thank you. Father, receive your word. Lord in heaven, it is not our word that is coming, but Father, it is yours that is coming from this pulpit. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. You know, as we heard this message this morning, um, I have said on this pulpit several times, I spoke about how, I'm not sure if I, I spoke about how my father started Deep Alive in his house in my hometown. It grew now to be a big church in my hometown. In Belgium, my brother who is in Maryland, he started Deep Alive in his house. I have discussed with our pastor how we started as a family. And now, it has become big and spread through the whole of Belgium. Amen? So I am very used to a message like this. And that is the reason why we need to train our children in the ways of the Lord, so that they will see, they will continue the message. Because I was saying, in fact, I have told our pastor several times that uh, the church will grow. That this is how it always starts. It starts from the house and it will grow out of the house. I've said to him several times, not knowing, I've never heard of the message of today, but I've been talking about all, all the message, this message all through my time and relationship with our pastor and sharing the word with you all. You know, in our, at our workplace, we have now every year they want us to involve ourselves in activity because they believe is that it, they now they want physical activity and emotional activity they believe that all this together helps for the well-being of humans and that because if your well-being is good they're going to spend less on you for health care so they're encouraging that for everyone so you choose activities so uh, it usually used to be physical activity, but this year they upgraded, to, they upgraded it to more than physical activity. So one of the activity I chose was to walk a distance of at least 2.5 miles three times a week or 7,000 steps. And the second activity is that I would teach the word of God at least once a week. It's written, and now it is in my file at work. Understanding the importance of commitment to the Word of God. My friend at work, or my colleague at work, that turned around his life by a gift of a Bible. I encourage him to share the word of God with his family. He's begun. I pulled two Bibles from the church and gave it to him. He gave one to his daughter and one to his son. We 
We might think that the little things that we do are little, but they are not. I have stood, you know, I stood on this pulpit and spoke about the Great Commission, parents to blame. You know, evangelism starts with you also. Think about the fact that if you are two, three, or four in the family and everybody is strong in the word of God. You know, on the last day, the Bible says that at the end, there's no father or mother. There's no son or daughter. There's no uncle or grandparents. So what does it mean? It means that those lives that are around you, they matter very much. You need to treat them like you're treating the person on the street. Me, I have always, and I'll continue to say it on the poopy that if you cannot carry your family along with you, forget about that you're going to evangelize to somebody else. Because at the, the Bible has said there's no father or mother. So the Bible is saying that those people with you, even though God has given you as a gift, so it's like God has given you as a gift, you know, to help you shape your life here on earth. But it's telling you that, you know, God, I'm serious, God will ask you. I'm saying, well, eh, it's just a... Uh, uh, you said my life is only is my, my wife or my son or my uncle. There is no son or uncle here in heaven. No. Those are lives that I wanted you to bring. So what did you do? What did you do with the lives that God has given you? I challenge each and every one of you. Before I know that our time is spent. But I'm still going to stay on course and finish at the appointed time that is required. Don't deceive yourselves. Let's not deceive ourselves. You know, in deeper life, when you, when you, in fact, that I know before, the pastor will correct me if I'm wrong, that you are made a pastor, they look at your family also. If you cannot carry your family along your children, you know, you don't, if your family is going where well, they will remove you as pastor. And I agree with it. You know, there is, because there is no father or mother in heaven. It means they're saying that even the people along with you, so you're deceiving yourself if you cannot carry your family along with you. It is a responsibility. If you cannot carry your family along, how can you go and carry somebody who is your neighbor? You are deceiving people. And that's the message of today that we heard. The great commission that Christ has given unto us. It ties into what I'm going to teach today. It ties into the message that I have taught twice as continuation of when you say, I know. It is the problem of the world. We say, I know. I know he's a thief. I know she's wayward. I know he's a drunk. How do you know? I know my Redeemer liveth. You ask me, how do I know? I'll take you to the Bible. Because knowledge is what? It's information that you have gathered. Like our brother said, it becomes power. If I say, I know that my Redeemer liveth, the reason why I say, I know that my Redeemer liveth, I'll give you an example. I'll show you the scriptures, and I will tell you how many times our Father in heaven has redeemed me. But if I say, I know that that person will never change, how do you know? You know, someone told me once that um, if you want if you want somebody to change, change yourself first. And I say, if you cannot change, you cannot follow our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible said that you have to be born again. So it means that, think about it. The way you used to be is not going to be high. When somebody sees you, they'll say, this is not the person that I know before. You're completely 
turned around and reborn, changed. So if you say you cannot change, you cannot follow God, you cannot follow Jesus. And that was my answer. They said, well, yeah, you are trying you know, to make me change. Do you know that you cannot change an adult? Well, you cannot follow God. Because what is it to be, to follow the Lord? You have to be reborn. Think about it. The child is born. You learn how to talk. You learn how to walk. You learn how to wear shoes. You learn how to, to wash yourself. I know. Our message today is going to be a continuation of the combination of I know and how do you walk with Jesus? Are you walking with Jesus in fear or you are walking with Jesus in faith? The message of today is the continuation of the two I know and how are you walking with Jesus? Do you trust Jesus? That's the title of the message of today. I know. How are you walking with Jesus? Is it with fear or with faith? Do you trust Jesus? The question to you now, I'll ask you the question. And then at the end, I'll ask you again. Do you trust Jesus? I'm not hearing any answer. Are you sure you trust Jesus? At the end of the message, I'll ask you the same question. And I want you to be truthful to yourself. To answer me, do you trust Jesus every day? Do you trust Jesus every day? I'll ask this question again. Let's open our book, sorry, our Bible to the book of Romans. We'll start with Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and we'll end with Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And I read, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I want you to underline all things work together for good to them that love God. So if you love God, it means that we'll see who loves God. All things work together for good. The Bible didn't say some. I know. How are you walking with Jesus? The Bible didn't say some things work together for good. It says all things work together for good. I'll ask a second question to you all. I want you to be faithful to yourself and answer the question. Who has lost money or lost something and said, Father, I thank you for losing that? Who has been fired from their job and said, Father, I thank you for allowing me to be fired from my job? Do I hear a yes? So that's why I have told you that I will ask the question again at the end. Do you trust Jesus? Because the, the scripture says everything works for good. So you are supposed to say, Father, I thank you because I lost the money. So if you are not saying, Father, I thank you because I lost the money, it means you are saying some things work for good and some do not. Do you trust Jesus? Do you trust Jesus every day? You know, I've heard some of us say, I'm a child of God. Look at how I'm suffering. Look at the people who are in the world. Look at how they're enjoying. My adopted father who, his brother, he said to me, he was at the home, at the nursing home, he said, Sir Benjamin, I'm tired, I want to go home. Now I understand why my brother says he's tired and he wanted to go home and he left. I know he's in heaven now. I said, no, you still have things to do. He said, why am I suffering? Why, am I, why should I follow God? He said, I stopped following God because people who, who refuse to follow God are living in good health. Look at me. And I ask the question, how do you know that they're living in good health? It comes back to, I know. 
a problem. I said, how do you know? Little by little, I told him that, look, God has allowed you to go through those things so that you can teach other people. You can counsel other people. Think about it. All things happen for good. Everything. And then the last time I went to saw him, he was watching, I think, he was watching either Benny Hinn or, um, he was watching Simon on the TV. He touched me, say, say, Benjamin, you're my good nephew. See now, I'm turning back to God. He said, because of the single word, everything happens for good. We'll come back to that. Do you trust Jesus? Let's, we'll read a little bit of when you give your life to Christ and what are the expectations from you. Everything happens for good. You're hungry or you're looking for something, you keep praying and praying and praying, it doesn't happen. You're saying, Father, why have you forsaken? How do you know that God has forsaken you? It's because you do not trust God. Because he says, all things happen for good. Whether you lack or you have, you are in pain. He says what? All things happen for good. Because if you keep your focus on the fact that all things happen for good, then in the moment he's going to teach you why he allowed that to happen. You know, when I was going to teach this, I was contemplating between talking about when you are angered, what will be your reaction? When somebody pushes you to the limit, what would be your reaction? Will you react like Job or will you react like Moses? You know, when Moses got, when he was pushed to the wall by the children of Israel, he used the, the staff to hit the stone to allow water, water to come. He was anger, he took matters into his hands. And I was contemplating between the two. When Job was angered by the enemy, Job took it to the Lord. Do you trust God? That is the message of the next time. It's going to be the continuation of, do you trust Jesus? Verse 11, Romans chapter 8. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. When they say you are debtors, it means you're owing somebody. Nowadays, it's like you're owing somebody property or you're owing somebody money. It means what? The Bible is saying, me and you, we are debtors. But debtors to who? Do you trust Jesus? Not to the flesh. Why not to the flesh? Why? Because the spirit of Jesus, in the previous verse, the spirit of Jesus is in us that quicken us to salvation. We are debtors not to the flesh. To live after the flesh. We are not debtors to the flesh. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord has quickened us to salvation. So me and you are no longer supposed to be debtors to the flesh. Whatever happens to the flesh, we're saying, Father, I thank you because the only being we are indebted to is the Spirit. Because the Spirit has taken over us. Do you trust Jesus? When you become indebted to the flesh, you don't trust Jesus. Everything doesn't happen for good. 
Mm. You know, you are driving, God forbid, somebody runs into you. And you're screaming and kicking. Or are you going to come out and say, Father, Lord in heaven, I thank you for this misfortune. Lord in heaven, what have I to learn from this situation? Does everything happen for good? If you're a parent, you have a rebel a rebellion child and you're like why did I even give birth to this child or you say father Lord in heaven I thank you what do you want me to learn from the rebelling child you know the last time we spoke about we, we, we the last time that I thought the side the scriptures here gift that to say Paul is who somebody who goes out you know He's outgoing. He immediately went out to the Pharisees and started a discussion about the word of God. What have you to learn from that rebellion child to use the gift and turn the life of that child? For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, Ye shall leave. That is who you are. Do you trust Jesus? Does everything happen for good? Because if you live after the Spirit, then everything that happens in your life is for good. Because that's what the scripture says. You know, I was saying that um, I thank the Lord when I came to this country, I came on my own completely on my own and I've been moving around the world on my own but I got help my redeemer is the one that I look at all the time he is the one who helps me all the time when I get a job when I get promotion it's all by the grace of God it's not because I know anyone. You know, I have met people on the street. I have met people in the store that I have never known before that walk up to me and tell me their problems. One time we were at the Walmart with my wife and we were going to buy things. And this guy looked confused and he turned to me. He's a physician, he said, I just finished from work. And my wife said, well, if I don't buy this and buy that, I shouldn't come back home. He said, can you imagine I've been walking through the night, through the day. He was physically shaking. I looked at me and my wife were talking and buying. He kept going. He kept on saying, what kind of world am I living in? What type of thing is this? That I cannot quietly go home and rest after I have worked for so long. I've never seen him before. He, never, he has never seen me. But here we are. He was pouring out his heart to a stranger. And the other day we stopped by the gas station. We met a guy who's in the military. He's putting the gas and he looked at me, he started a discussion. He didn't even want to leave. We were stuck by the gas station. I was telling him, well, we're blocking people from, he, he, he didn't even want to leave. He forgot about the fact that, so what am I saying? that every moment should be a moment in your life to say everything happens for good. Everything. But except if you're led by the Spirit of God, that you're no longer living in flesh. So, my brothers and sisters, 
if some things happen, if you say some things happen for good and some happen not for good, then it looks like you're living by the mortal body. You're not living by the spirit. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Everything happens for good because when you are the child of God, you live by the Spirit. For, for ye have not received, verse 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again. When you are living in a mortal body, you have the spirit of bondage. You are bound. You are bound to your situations. You are bound to the fact that some things happen. You know, this person is coming after me. That's why it happened. But you are saying, no. It happened. Everything is for good. You know, one preacher once said, you know, he, he talking about everything happens for good. Give an example of salt. You know, salt is a combination of two chemicals. Sodium and chlorine. On their own, chlorine, you know, although it's chlorine is used to purify water that we drink. But then when they mix together, it gives flavor to food. In certain amount, salt is good. In certain amount, it is bad. Everything happens for good. Do you know that even as you're taking the step, if you stumble and fall, God is delaying you because maybe of something bad that will have happened. I've given an instance here that I missed a flight and the plane crashed. Everybody died in it. All have been dead a long time ago. We heard the stories about September 11. There are some people who were late. Some, some, some people went to drop their children off to school before coming to work. And they survived. Everything happened for good. Probably some of them will have been thinking, well, I'm late for work. I don't know what my boss is going to say. Then boom, everybody's dead. There was one time that me and someone were supposed to drive back to back. I told him, well, I need five, ten minutes. He said, no, let's follow each other. The road is bad. I said, no. He left. I left, I think, about five, ten minutes behind him. He was attacked by armed robbers, and I missed it. You know, sometimes I want to go somewhere and my wife will be delaying me. I get very upset. And I said, do you know we're going to be late? You know, I said to myself, Father, help me and thank you for whatever you've prevented from happening. Everything happens for good. If you still are not saying everything happens for good, re-examine your life. Because the Bible says, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Where be we cry, Abba, Father. You've been adopted. you received the spirit, so you cry, Abba, Father. And if children then hears, hears of God and join hears with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. He did not say that we enjoy with Christ. Amen. He said we suffer with him. So during your suffering, do you say, Father, thank you, God, because I'm suffering? Who has said that before? 
Raise your hand, nobody, right? When you're having a headache or the stomach ache is bothering you, say, Father, thank you for this stomach ache because tomorrow I'm going to explain to somebody when they tell me they're having stomach ache, how bad it is, how I'm going to have compassion on people who have stomach ache or who have headaches. There's no one among you here who has never felt before since they were born. So if you see somebody fall, you know how painful it is. There's none of you here that has never slashed his hand with a razor or a blade that has bled. So when you see somebody bleeding, you know the pain. You know, the Bible didn't say, if and if children, the hairs, hairs of God, and joint hairs with Christ, if so be that we enjoy with him. Is that what the Bible is saying? It says, we suffer with him that we may be as glorified together. Everything happens for good. Is that what you're saying? We're going to close soon. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The Bible is not saying what? Well, it, say, it continues to even say suffer. Have you glorified God in your suffering? Have you given praises? If you have not, if you have not, I tell you to re-examine yourself because it says all things happen for good. The Bible didn't say some. Look at this explaining to say when you had the spirit there is suffering. You know, when Christ was on the cross, what did he say? He said, Father, thank you. When the disciple cut out the ear, what did he say? He said, put it back. That is the expectation when we live in the spirit that everything happens for good. He said, Father, it is, if it is my will, let this cup pass me. It's okay for you to say, well, this suffering is hard. This is difficult. You can complain, but the conclusion is what matters. Christ said, if this is my will, let this cup pass away because the pain is too much. But he didn't stop that. He said, Father, it's not my will. Let their will be done. He said, there is no stopping me, even with the pain. You are saying even with the pain, with the trouble, Father, I thank you because there is no stopping me because you have said in your word everything happens for good. Do you trust Jesus? Every day. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected some in hope. I read verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to we. The redemption of our body for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth what doth he yet hope for in our times of suffering because if you're hoping for you saying that's faith if you've seen it then what are you hoping for you know, I hope that when I wake up, my death will be gone. I hope that when I wake up, you are envisaging. Do you trust Jesus? If you trust Jesus, then you glorify him in everything, not some. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Amen. He's telling you, if you trust in the Spirit, 
If everything happens for good, then the Spirit will help your suffering. He says, the Spirit that liveth in you will help your infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. Sorry, which cannot be altered. The Spirit is intercession for you. Because what? In the time of pain, you, because you don't know what you, are, you will pray for. In the time of suffering, you don't know what, you, the only thing you are saying is that, Father, I thank you, Father, I thank you, Father, I thank you. Whatever I'm going through, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, because you know the best. The Spirit is interceding in your behalf. Because through the pain you are going, you don't even know what to say. You're just thanking God. And the Spirit is interpreting your thanks to God that you're crying for help. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. Amen. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. If you search your heart, the Spirit is interceding, interceding for you so when you are praying, he says you don't even know what you will say. When you are in so much pain, when all those things that we think that we are supposed to say, well, not everything happens for good. You are saying, Father, I thank you. Even the, the, the pain that I'm going through, Father, I thank you. You are saying nothing. The pain is there. Father, Lord, I thank you. I exalt your name, Father. I worship you because you're the only God. You're the only spirit that liveth. You are thanking God because the pain is so much that you cannot explain. But the Holy Spirit knows you. And the Holy Spirit is telling the Father what you need. It says what? According to the will of God. When it's time for God, God is going to make things right. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And then finally, it says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now I ask the question Do you trust Jesus every day? Do you trust Jesus every day? I didn't hear an answer. Do you? So if you trust Jesus every day, does everything happen for good in your life? Has it, has it been how you've been living your life? Or you've been complaining? Praise the Lord. You don't have to answer my question. You don't have to answer my question. Do you trust Jesus? Do you trust Jesus every day? Do you say, Father, everything happens for good? Do you believe that in your pain, in your time, that when you're saying, Father, I thank you for everything. And I thank you for the son, the daughter that you've given me. Even though it has become headache, I thank you for the family you've given me. I thank you for my spouse. Even though it's a source of pain, but you're saying everything happens for good. Are you looking for the Spirit to help you? I do a lot of things on purpose, but a lot of times I do not explain to people why I do it. 
Amen. What is your purpose? The reason why I say I do things for a purpose is that, you know, we heard this morning, we need to plan. We need to plan. That as we're sowing the seeds, as we're building those house fellowships, we need to plan so that we don't get frustrated. The kingdom of God is all about planning. Let's, it's all about planning. Even God himself, at the beginning, he's created heaven and earth. Six days, then he rested. So it's well planned. Day this, he did that. Day that, he did this. It's well planned. The Spirit of the Lord will guide you to plan your life. Do you trust Jesus? Does everything in your life happen for good? Do you believe that the Spirit is interceding for you? Can our pastor please close with a word of prayer? Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, Almighty Father, we thank you, Lord. We glorify your name for reminding us once again that all things work for good for those who are in Christ. Almighty Father, we look back and then we look at the area whereby we have murmured. And you have told us in the book of Corinthians that there shouldn't be anything like murmuring in our life. Father, but you have brought us to that stage this morning that all things work for good for those people who are in Christ. Father, and then one of the things we are grateful for is that we are in you and you are, you are in us. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ that all things we have lost in the past and we think that was the end of the road. That was the cause of the problem, the genesis of our problem. Father, we pray as we have learned today, you let them happen so that we can get to our destination. Accept all our appreciation in Jesus' name. In all area, we have sent tears. And you let us know this morning there was a purpose, I mean, there's a purpose for it. Father, accept our appreciation in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray. We don't need to ask again because already you have let us know that our captivity should be returned. Already you have made all those problems in ladder to program for us. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not fall in Jesus' name. And we will, we will continue to go higher to higher in Jesus' name. And I pass your message to your children. You say unto them, wipe away your tears. I congratulate every one of you this morning that under the ministration of today, that God is saying, wipe away your tears. I know you have done that wrong. And it's like the mark of it is following you. And it's like it is the genesis of your situation. But God is telling you this morning, it is for a purpose. It was for you, I mean, it was for a purpose. And he's saying, wipe away your tears. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, the ability the strength, the power, the energy, all what you need to able to concentrate and let the background be background so that you can get to your destination, God will give to you this morning in Jesus' name. In your secret, whereby your heart is broke. Your heart is broken. And it's like injury is there. 
Your heart has been wounded because of the past. But listening to the word of the Lord this morning, everything happens for good for those people who are in Christ. And then he said, Why we pay your wipe away your tears? And if you continue to be consistent and you do not go away from him, from his word, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, everything is going to turn to testimony for you in Jesus' name. It's going to turn to testimony for me in Jesus' name. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, from henceforth, the direction of the Lord, the way forward, the restitution, the goal and ambition according to the will of the Lord will come to pass in the life of every one of us in Jesus' name. And as a result of that, many people from the world, they will come to Jesus as a result of our testimony in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answered me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, God bless you.